In front of me here is a Marimo notebook, and you can see that I've got a little bit of code over here, and that there's also some output down below. On a first glance, this might remind you of other Python notebook environments, but you should really think about Marimo as something more modern and perhaps even next generational. Unlike traditional notebooks, Marimo notebooks are stored as pure Python. This makes them much more reproducible, but it also means that you can run notebooks as if they are scripts, while also still allowing you to run notebooks as if they're apps. But most of all, Marimo gives you a reactive Python environment to work in. And it's this reactive environment that really provides a lot of the benefits. The code is much less error prone, and you can also easily mix and match user interface elements together with your Python code. And that's where a lot of the power also comes from. Now, it's incredibly hard to explain this to you by just telling. So the goal of this video is to show you by demonstrating this one example use case that I've got in my house with my solar panels. It'll be a small preview of Marimo, but hopefully it'll be enough to highlight why I think, at least for me, Remo has really updated the way that I think about notebooks, and it's also changed the way that I work with data, uh, I would argue, for the better. So what are we actually looking at here? Well, this chart over here shows the contents of this one data set I've got, uh, history.csv, and this is a data set that I'm actually scraping on a daily basis using Git scraping techniques. There is a cron job that checks an endpoint that's open, and it will pull in any data that's new and add that to a uh, local file. And I've been doing this for a while, right? So you can see that I've got like a year's worth of data, just about. This data set has lots of columns, but the one chart we're looking at over here contains sunshine duration over time. And kind of as you would expect, you can see that summer hits, there's more sunshine, then winter hits again, there's less sunshine. But there's also a little bit of variety. Uh, but this is just one of the features that I've got in this data set. There's a bunch of other ones. And the use case that I had in mind for this data set was, I've got these solar panels on my roof, and it might just be kind of nice that if I have a weather prediction, I can also just kind of predict the number of kilowatt hours that come in, in terms of the energy uh, for the next day. You can imagine that by doing that, I might be able to uh, plan when to turn on or off certain appliances in the house and stuff like that. Or maybe when to turn on or off, uh, let's say a battery. Now, fun fact about my solar panels, they also generate data, which is very convenient because that allows me to make charts like this. Again, we've got the date over here, uh, but then we also have the kilowatt hours and very similar pattern, right? At some point it's summer, you expect more solar and then uh, it's gonna go down during the winter again and then it's uh, gonna go up again. Now you can imagine that there are some subtleties here as well. If it's hotter at some point, the output of the solar panels goes down. So well, it'd be nice to have some sort of a machine learning model kind of figure out the details on this one. But in short, I wanna have weather information going in and kilowatt hours predictions going out. So as you can imagine, the most logical next step at this point is to just uh, join the data sets together. And then I have a data set that I can apply uh, some machine learning use cases on. But right here at this particular point in my notebook and in my uh, data workflow, you could say, there's an opportunity for Marimo to kind of show off in how it might make my day just a little bit nicer. So just to show off this one trick, right? I have columns over here of my machine learning features. So that's the uh, meteorology data set that I started with. I'm checking all the columns over here. And again, you can see I've got sunshine duration, but I've also got things like wind speed. Uh, I also have some temperature, some minimum values and some maximum values, et cetera. But at this point, before making a model, I kind of want to explore and understand this data set first. So you can kind of imagine that I might want to be able to just click this one column for now. And then I maybe want to have a chart over here that shows uh, how that variable uh, changes over time, right? So there might be some sort of a pattern over here that helps me understand just what I'm talking about. Uh, but similarly, what I would also like to know is if I take that feature, uh, maybe how that relates to the kilowatt hours. And what I don't want to do is maybe do all this stuff manually. And what I probably also don't want to have is like a giant report. But at this point, I would just like to have a little UI element that allows me to quickly make this selection. And it's stuff like this uh, that Marimo actually just kind of shines in. It's very easy for me to just mix and match some UI elements to get what I want here. So what I'm just gonna go ahead and do is from the Marimo UI module, I'm just gonna say that I wanna have a radio selector and the options to pick from will just be the columns that I just uh, generated. And let's also give it a starting value. I think uh, sunshine duration would probably be, uh, you know, sensible. Now, when I run this, you can see that I've generated a UI element. And you can also see that I'm able to uh, make selections. Nothing is happening as a result just yet, but I have just gone from list of strings to UI element. And what I can do is I can store this UI element into a variable. So uh, let's just say that's a radio element for the columns. And then that is now a Python variable that I could reuse in some other cell somehow. And if you have a look at the cell below, this is how I am using it. Now do observe, there is a Marimo horizontal stack function that I'm using. So I am stacking three things next to each other horizontally. 
The first thing is that selection element. So I can select a sunshine duration or something else. And then after that are the two charts that I mentioned. The first chart over here shows the date and then the variable itself. And I can kind of see what is happening over time in the year. And if I were to then scroll a little bit more to the right, uh, you can see the sunshine duration in this case with the kilowatt hours. I've zoomed out a little bit just to give you the full picture of what it's like to use this on a screen, because at this point I can kind of start clicking around. I can sort of say, well, we've got the sunshine duration. It's kind of interesting. What does the UV index maybe do instead? Okay, that's interesting. That's a pattern that has uh, definitely some less noise actually on this chart. So that's perhaps good to know. Daylight duration. Oh, that's also kind of interesting. That has zero noise actually. That also kind of makes sense if you think about it. But notice what I'm doing here. I'm basically building my own interface for this specific data task that I've got in mind. And that just allows me to be very flexible, but it also allows me to build interfaces that allow me to reflect on the data itself, thereby also testing my own knowledge, which I think is a very important thing to do whenever you're doing anything with data. Now, before moving on, I can imagine that you're looking at this and you're kind of wondering, well, how does this work? Because I seem to be just able to click around and all these things just kind of automatically update. And I can definitely imagine if you've never seen this before, this might feel a bit odd. But the reason that this works is because Marimo uses a reactive Python environment. So to help to explain the reactivity aspect of it, I've made these three cells over here. Uh, the first cell just declares a variable, a equals one, and the second cell also does that just for a variable b equals two. But the third cell actually does something with both of those variables, uh, and it's just adding those two numbers together, and lo and behold, the output is three, no surprise there. But the thing that's kind of interesting about Marimo is that because it assumes the Python code is written in a reactive format, it can understand that a cell has updated, and that therefore all the children, as in all the other cells that depend on the variables that have been declared, can update automatically. So if I were to change this to 10 and then uh, rerun this one cell, then without doing anything, you can see that this cell over here updates. Now, I hope with this little explainer, it's clear what we mean with reactivity, but I also hope it's clear that as a consequence of having a reactive notebook, you also get the ability for UI elements to integrate quite natively. Updating this user interface element really is just like updating a variable. And the fact that we've got a radio selector defined over here, that's totally cool. We can still refer to it in other cells later. But the order of things here really is, once we update this variable, it'll update a cell that follows. It's not so much that the cell updates, uh, but also the variables over here, which also means that we get an update uh, to the charts. And you don't have to write any extra code whatsoever. And the really nice thing about that is that you can really focus more about making these little interfaces that help your workflow at the current point in your notebook. Now, taking a step back on a macro level, I also hope that you can appreciate that it's just incredibly useful to be able to construct your own interfaces as you're doing data work. But this reactive nature also has other benefits. Hopefully you can also imagine that by having a notebook that's fully reactive, if you ever make a mistake in one of the cells, the error will just appear immediately, and you don't have to run all the cells in your notebook beforehand in order to discover where something might have gone wrong. So you can also expect quicker feedback. Now, there are lots of details here that deserve discussion. Uh, for example, if you are dealing with tasks that really take a long time to compute, then you can actually disable this automatic execution. There's settings for that, and I'll explain those details in later videos. But for now, I mainly hope that it's just really clear uh, what the reactive nature brings to the table. So, okay, we've got this interactive interface over here that allows us to show some charts that helps us understand our data. A very good next step would be to actually go ahead and do some machine learning. And again, because it's a Marimo notebook, I figured making a little interface for this as well. Here I've got a little selector that allows me to pick between two machine learning models. And here I've got two charts. The first one shows the predictions versus the real values, and you can kind of get an impression of what kind of mistakes it tends to make by looking at this. But I've also made this other chart that tends to help me debug, which is, Given the current date, uh, what kind of error do we make? And the script is handling all the cross-validation on my behalf, so uh, this, this is a pretty good first summary. And again, when I change algorithms, you can also see that the charts just uh, automatically update. So this is definitely super nice and definitely super useful. But as a final step, what I've also done is I've just added this little script at the bottom over here where I take the most recent data point in my meteorologist data set, and for that one data point, I just make the prediction in line like this. So this is kind of the final UI element that I might be interested in if this were more of a production app, so to say. Uh, if I wanna have a bit of a dashboard that gives me a number, then this is the number uh, that I can go ahead and generate. Now, another really cool feature of Marimo at this point is that right now I'm in edit mode that allows me to edit the cells, but I can also be in live mode. You can find a button on the right-hand side over here, and when you click it, you toggle the app view, which basically removes all the code 
and just lets you focus on the UI elements that you've generated. So that means that I can make some changes to this notebook to actually have it behave a little bit more like an app or a dashboard, kind of as a final artifact of my research. And that's particularly interesting because in the end, I might just be interested in this first and foremost, and then I might just want to have a couple of charts below that help me evaluate the model, but you can consider making different notebooks for different use cases. The element over here that really allows me to make a few selections and then explore my data, that's really great for exploratory work, but you can also imagine having some notebooks that are a little bit more for the conclusion, so to say. And if that's something you're working towards, I kind of have to mention this one other feature that Marimo has. And that is that you can actually deploy Marimo statically on the web. So what I've got over here is my GitHub repository that is doing the Git scraping. Uh, you can go to this actions tab over here and you can definitely see the Git scraping job happening on a daily basis. But you can also see that I've got something on my GitHub pages. So let's just click that. And when I do this, hey, you can see that Marimo spins up. Now, what you're looking at here is definitely a Marimo app, but it's a Marimo app that is not running on a Python backend, so to say. It is running fully inside the browser. Now, the way that this works is that under the hood, we have modern technologies nowadays like Pyodide that can help us deploy Marimo on Wasm, which is a runtime environment for the front end. And although not every single Python package works on that just yet, uh, most of the modern data science packages actually do these days. And that allows me to run scikit-learn inside of Marimo on the front end with zero dependencies as its own artifact. And in my GitHub repo, I'm basically pushing a new version every single day as I scrape new data. So if I'm interested in just knowing something about the kilowatt hours that I can expect uh, today, then I just have to go to this URL. And then I can see that for this particular date, we have a certain amount of kilowatt hours that we're uh, predicting. Looking outside the window, that also makes sense. Today is a very sunny day, so... Happy to see that that prediction is working out. And I can also uh, switch the algorithms around, maybe get an impression of the variance. Uh, and I can also scroll down. This is a different UI element that Marimo can render for you uh, to basically get the entire uh, data set that I can download locally if I want to do some analytics. Uh, there's a little download button, a little data frame explorer as well. But at this particular point, what I'm mainly hoping to convey is that Marimo really has a lot of features that allow you to just rethink the way you work with data. At the center of it all is a reactive environment, but many of the happy consequences include being able to just add a UI element as you're working with data, and that UI element can be very bespoke to the problem you're trying to solve. And just that on its own has proven to be such a liberating feeling because it really feels like you can just let use your own creativity. And that is something we need more of in data science, if you ask me. So there you go. I hope that this demonstration helps emphasize why Marimo actually has some new ideas that it brings to the table as far as Python notebooks go, and especially in this domain of doing things with data. I do want to convey, though, that this is just a demo, and I've only really been able to scratch the surface. There are lots of bigger and smaller features that all deserve some attention, and there's also just a couple of these areas where applying Marimo just makes a whole lot of sense, and I would like to spend some time on this channel diving a little bit more into those things as well. If you're curious to learn more about Marimo, definitely check out the documentation page up here on the Marimo website. But what you can also do is join our Discord. You can find my colleagues there as well as myself. And if you have any feedback or maybe some notebooks you would like to share, we are definitely keen on seeing those. If you're curious to learn more about Marimo though, what you can also do is hit subscribe on YouTube below. It will be my goal to showcase lots of interesting applications and also do proper deep dives in some of the features that Marimo has. There are also going to be some new features, by the way, and you can definitely expect this YouTube channel to be a nice method to stay in the loop. Having said all of that, I hope this was an interesting demo, and I'll see you in the next video.